Hazreti Resul-i Ekrem ve Nebi Muhterem sallallahu teala aleyhi ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretlerinin aziz pak münevver mutahar ruh şeriflerine salavat-ı şerife getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır ola. Âle ezvâce tahirâti evlâdi Resul-i Eshâb-ı Güzin Efendilerimizin Sayr-ı Enbiya Azam-ı Resul-i Kerem Hazretlerinin ervah şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal-i Habeşi radiyallahu anh Efendimizin Mihmendari Resul-i Kibriya Eyyub Sultan Halid bin Zeyd Ebe Eyyub al-Ansari radiyallahu anh Şah Murşid Anşah, Hacı Muhammed Buhaddin Akşifendil Buhari, Mevlana Celal Dine Rumi, Mevlana Ziyad-ı Din Halid el-Bağdadi, Sahib-ı Zaman Kıbrıt-ül İslam, Şeyh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adal al-Hakkani, Sahib-ı Seyf, Şeyh Abdülkerim ve Kıbrıs-i Rabbani Kadı sallallahu asarunum hazıratının ervahı için, Hadım-ı Harameyn-i Şerif, Ayn Yavuz Sultan Selim Han, Ebel Fatif el-Mavazi, Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han, ve Serdar-ı Hakan, Sultan Abdül Hamid Han Cennet Mekan, Fedavs-i Aşiyan hazıratının ervahına ve avni enayetine, Ağlal husus bu caminin bayinisi ve bugüne kadar iş eserinden gelmiş geçmiş İmam Muazzin Kayyim Cemaatinin ve kafe ehli iman ervahi için Allah rızası için el-Fatiha. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. İnna Allahu ve melaiketuhu yusallun ala nebi. Ya eyyuhallazine amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نحمد الله تعالى ونصف بنا شروعا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له نشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده وحبيبه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وزواجه وأصحاب التابعين خلف الراشد محمد بن بعضي وزي ما تلا تحقيق وخصوصا منهم على الأميت خلف رسول الله تحقيق أمر المؤمنين حاضرة أبو بكر ومار السمان وعلي وعلى بكر صحاب التابعين ورد الله تعالى بهم أجمعين يا أيها المؤمن الحاضرون تقول الله تعالى إن الله من الذين تقول الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah رب العالمين All praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran in سورة الزمر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now when hurt touches a man he cries unto us. And afterward, when we have granted him a favor from us, he says, I have only been given this favor because of my own knowledge. No, but it is a test. But most of them do not know. Those before them said the same, but all that they had earned did not help them. But the evils that they earned struck them down. And those who have done zulm from these people, the evils that they earn will strike them down as well. They cannot escape. Don't they know that Allah enlarges the risk for whom He wills and tightens it for whom He wills? Indeed, in that are signs for people who believe Say, Ya Muhammad wasalam, O my servants who have transgressed against themselves, despair not of the mercy of Allah who forgives all sins. Truly He is the forgiving, the merciful. And come back to your Lord in repentance and surrender to Him 
before there comes to you the punishment when you cannot be helped. Sadaqallah al May peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Messengers, Sayyidina Muhammad Once Holy Prophet heard the Sahabis speaking about the rank of Ibrahim Halilullah and Musa Najiullah and Isa Ruhullah and Adam Safiullah and the Holy Prophet approached them and said, I've heard your conversation. Truly Ibrahim was the Halil, the Halil, the friend of Allah. Musa was the Naji, the one granted salvation of Allah. Isa was the word of Allah and his spirit. And Adam was the Safi, chosen one of Allah. Now listen carefully. I am the Habib of Allah. And this is not a boast. On the day of judgment, the banner of praise shall be in my hand. And under this flag, will be Adam salam and all the other prophets, and this is not a boast. On the day of judgment, I shall be the first to make shafa'at, and the first whose shafa'at will be accepted, and this is not a boast. I shall be the first for whom the door of Jannah shall open, and I, along with the poor ones from my ummat, will enter Jannah, and this is not a boast. I am the most dignified with Allah from all those who have ever lived and all those who shall ever live. And this is not a boast. And the Prophet of Allah speak the truth. May peace and blessings be upon that beloved Rasul, his noble family and his blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman al Ghani and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the Grand Shaykhs of this Naqshbandi way, the inheritors of the Prophet. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Sultans, who were the shadows of Allah on earth. May Allah let their shade once again protect the Ummah from the scorching heat of tyranny. May Allah hasten their return. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah disgrace those who hate them. Amin. Ya yuhal mu'minun, O believers, we are thanking Allah for granting us to reach to this month of Mawlid and for letting us to be from those who are remembering and celebrating and thanking Him for the ni'mat and blessings of Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad May we be counted as His ummatis in this life and the next life. And may that Holy Prophet be pleased with our celebration of His Mawlid. Amin. The sending of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is a mercy to us. Islam teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted enough intelligence to a man that even without prophets or revelation, a man just by his own intelligence should be able to understand and to know that there is one Allah who created him and that this Allah deserves to be worshipped. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. He sent us guides to show us the way, to teach us who he is, and to teach us how to return to him. Our Shaykh Sahib al-Sayf, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Karizhi Rabbani Karasir is saying, it is a great blessing to mankind for their Lord to send a message saying, this is what I want from you. If he didn't send any messengers, and if he didn't send any books to us, then the intelligence that he has given us was going to make us responsible on the judgment day. We were going to be appearing on earth and saying, Oh, what happened? Who put us here? And that way, we would have been forced to think and find our Lord. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easier for us with his mercy. He sent prophets books, messengers and holy people who came after. No group of people on the judgment day is going to be able to say, I didn't know. I didn't know any better and so I didn't do this and I didn't do that. Allah is saying to us, we have sent a reminder to every nation, somebody to remind them. 
somebody to tell them and somebody to give them the good news also. The messengers didn't just come to remind us and to put fear in us. They also came to give us the good news, to teach us and to show us how much our Lord cares for us and loves us. We should take a moment to think how difficult this life would be with all the distractions of this life, with all the tricks of the ego, with all the temptations of the desires, with all the traps of shaitan, how difficult it would be for us by ourselves to find Allah. And when we understand the mercy that has been granted to us by the sending of the Holy Prophet, and by having his inheritors who continue his guidance, we must be in a state of thankfulness always. Shaykh Andy is saying something very important. The messengers did not come just to put fear into the people. They came to give a good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us, the one who gave us life, the one who sustains us, that he cares for us and he loves us. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for himself. And the reality of that creation is that he has created us out of his love and, to, and for us to return that love. Sahib al Saif is saying, if a man is not showing any love back to the Lord who is giving everything, that one is a kafir. The kafir, the unbeliever, is that one. 24 hours a day, the Creator is sending his mercy, his rahmat. Everything around us and everything in and out of us is because of his mercy. If you are not returning that love, even with just words, by sitting somewhere saying, Oh my Lord, you love me and I love you. Then for that one, it is better to be under the earth than to be above it. And our Grand Sheikh Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim al Hakani, Qadr Nasir, is saying about this Allah Almighty asks of his servants to worship with ikhlas, sincerity, purity. He asks, for pure worship, which means to have a pure heart, a heart that has nothing in it but its Lord. Each of us knows which side of himself is not true or which of his characteristics is not good. We must strive to have pure hearts. That is jihad, to fight with one's bad characteristics and change them into good ones. Everything that occupies your heart and keeps you from your Lord, makes your heart impure. You must try to keep everything away from your heart, except for Allah. We say that the heart is for Allah alone. Man is created for the love of Allah Almighty. Anytime you put your love in this dunya, it will be wasted. But if you put your love with Allah, if you put your love with the Prophet, if you put your love with your shaykh or with your fellow believers, you may find that love here and hereafter. It is never going to be wasted. Love is the most precious, most valuable, most expensive thing that the sons of Adam they have been given. And one of the tricks and traps that shaitan comes with us is to take a man to the place of depression, of giving up, of despair, and to make a man lose his hope and his love in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To lose hope in the mercy of Allah, that is the sunnah of shaitan. And that is not true. When a person loses hope, he stops trying to return to Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, O oh, son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done, and I shall not mind. O oh, son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I would forgive you. O oh, son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me 
ascribing no partner to me. I will bring you forgiveness nearly as great as that. Sahih al-Sahib is opening the ayat that we read at the beginning of the khutbah, saying, in one ayat Allah is saying to us, O you who pass your limits in every wrong thing, going under the heavy burdens of sins, don't lose hope from him because he is the most forgiving one. You will find him forgiving for you, whatever you have done, as soon as you turn to him. So the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah is there, but there is a condition. We must turn back to him. We must turn our face away from everything else, away from our dunya, towards our mawla, if we want to be granted that mercy. For the one who leaves his ego outside, for the one who puts his ego outside, the derga is not a derga of despair. Turning back to Allah in reality means trying to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us and trying to return that love to Allah. Sahib al-Sahib is saying, if you are not making Allah happy with you, then the whole world is not going to give you the best of it. It's only going to give you only the headaches of it and the burdens of it. Because the world has also been ordered by the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who run after you, run away from them, cheat them, and fool them, saying to them, I am yours, come, come. And they will be busy with you, running after you all the time, but never give any real treasure to them. Keep them wandering, keep them in pain, keep them in suffering, and keep them running after you. Any minute, any second they turn away from you, and they turn their faces towards me, then put all the treasures under their feet. This is the order that Allah has given to this world. Except for mankind, all other creatures are obeying the order, except man. Man has been created in Ahsani Taqwim, the most perfect one, but the man is the one that is disobeying the order. All other creatures and everything that you are seeing, alive or dead, to you is dead. But in the Divine Presence, everything has a life. Everything in existence has a life in their own world. Everything are obeying that order. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered to this world and this is what this world is doing. Anyone who leaves Allah and runs after the world just gets tired. Tired, tired, tired, and in the end, they retire, and after that they become retired to the other side. What is the benefit of this world then? What did you think? You must think, if everything was given to us, if the whole world was given to us by tonight, what are we going to do if we don't have Allah? What are we going to do if we don't have Islam? What are we going to do if we don't worship? What are we going to do then? Sit and eat non-stop and sleep non-stop? Your life has no meaning then. When we are running to live with the love of Allah, we become alive. We may be having the most painful lives but there is a sweetness to that because our Lord is happy with us and we become alive. You can get this whole world, but when there is no love of Allah, everything becomes dead. Even the pleasures and the treasures are tasteless. When we are running to live to follow the way of the Holy Prophet, we are alive. When we are running for the honor of Islam and for the sake of our fellow believers, we become alive. Running for dunya makes a person to live as a dead person, becoming more tired, more tasteless, more hopeless, and in the end, falling into the hands of shaitan to become one of his tools and his fool. When you live for Allah, everything is yours. Look at the deep words of Shafandi. 
is using to describe the person who lives for Allah, saying, He has created us and He is promising to us that when we are obeying Him, then He is under our service. If a person pays attention to these words, he's going to hear the echo of Siddiq al-Akbar when he said, I have left Allah and His Prophet for my family. So what is Allah considering as obedience to Him? What does Allah in the end, what does He want from us? Shaykh Hani is saying, we are saying we are serving Allah. What are we doing? Praying. Praying. Prayer is for you. Musa alayhi salam, Kalimullah, one of the Ulul Azam prophets to whom a book is given, Allah is addressing him, saying, Ya Musa, what have you done for me? The prophet is saying, Ya Rabbi, I'm praying, that is for you. I'm fasting, that is also for you. I'm making pilgrimage, that is also for you. I'm giving in your way what you have given to me, sharing, that is also for you. He says, Ya Rabbi, I don't know what to do for you. So Allah is addressing, saying to him, Love those that I love and leave those that I don't love. If we just obey this, just this, then we will find ways because if we love those that Allah loves, then their blessing is going to reach to us before anything else because they are sitting in the Divine Presence. Whatever they ask, Allah will not say no to them. They ask, and Allah says, I'll give. Whatever you want, I'll give. But we must try to reach to those, and reaching to those is not running and giving something, taking something or whatever you have. No. It's the proper manners, proper respect. That's what they are looking at. Because where every knowledge, every intelligence, and every ilm is finishing, that's where proper manners is beginning. And then, who has proper manners? Has intelligence. All intelligence is to teach people to have proper manners. Shaitan lost proper manners. He lost the manners and all these worship and everything that he did, Allah counted them for zero. And he said to him, get lost from the Divine Presence. And wherever I am sending you is a punishment to you. Stay there until the last day, and after that I will put you into accounting. So when a man loses proper respect, then he will also be kicked away from the Divine Presence. Allah wants us to love His beloved ones. Allah wants us to leave those ones that He has left. Shaykh Hendi is showing us that the highest place where a man can reach is to manners, adept, good manners. Shaykh Hendi is always reminding us of how shaitan fell and his fall was caused by losing his manners in the divine station. He claimed to love Allah. He claimed that he refused to bow down to Adam salam because of his love to Allah. But all that love was put to the test and it showed to be fake because all that love that he's claiming was a selfish love not for Allah but for himself because he refused to show good manners in the Divine Presence and his reality comes out. Shem Olana is saying in his Sohbat that love is the most valuable thing the greatest treasure that has been granted to Bani Adam. If love is a treasure, then adab is the treasure box that keeps that treasure safe. When a man has adab, even if tests come, even if whisperings come, even if the road becomes dangerous, he's going to keep that treasure of love safe because it is being protected by good manners. A man can have every knowledge, but without good manners, there is no safety, there is no protection, and he can lose it at any time. Shemalana is saying, on the Day of Judgment, the ones with adab and those without adab will be set apart. 
The ones who have adab will be put in paradises, and the ones who have no adab will be thrown into the darkness which belongs to them. Ewliya, they speak from the Quran. As in Surah Al Yasin, in the heart of the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, indeed the companions of paradise that day will be busy in happiness. They and their spouses will be in pleasant shade on thrones, reclining. For them therein is fruit, and for them is whatever they request. Salam, a word from a Lord most beautiful. Then he will say, but stand apart today, O you guilty ones. Ud mujrimun. Sadaqallah alazim. Manners, you cannot learn from books or videos. Manners, you're going to learn from the people of manners. To have peace in our hearts, we have to be with those who are receiving that peace. To have peace in your hearts, you have to be with those ones who are receiving that addressing of salam. Sahib al-Sahib is saying about the Sultan of the Prophets. Prophet Allah said to us, salam is saying, O oh my Lord, do not ask me to worship the way you deserve to be worshipped. Do not ask me to worship the way you deserve to be worshipped because I cannot handle it. He also said, O oh my Lord, don't leave me in the hands of my ego, even for the blink of an eye. Don't leave me to my ego for even that much because I'm fearful that I will lose. With that, the understanding is being given to us that the Holy Prophet has never done anything from his ego and Allah did not leave him to his own ego for a split second. And because of that, every second he's going through different stations, reaching to higher stations and he's seeing how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Every time he is reaching from one station to another, he is understanding the mercy that Allah is sending to mankind and how great our Lord is. And because of that, he is saying, I cannot worship the way you deserve to be worshipped. It is impossible. But even the small things that we are doing here, the small deeds that we're doing here, inshallah, will be counted. And the big sins that we are making, inshallah, will be erased before we reach to the other side because we are living in the last days of this world. We are living the last days. Sahib al Saif, he speaks the truth. This way, this dargah, this association, it is to bring people to the station of Adab so that inshallah on the day of judgment we stand with the people of Adab, the people of Salam. This way, this dargah, this association, to bring people to the station of Adab, it is not according to what you think or what you like, and it is not easy. Shaitan and your ego will rebel and will scream and shout to you for you to have hate and doubt to those same ones that yesterday you were kissing their hands and understanding that they are bringing you to Allah. This way, this dargah, this association is to bring people to the station of Adab. But the way to that high station is not something that is so simple and easy for people to reach. It is easy with their spirit, but with their ego, it has no place here. We're asking that we stand with the people of Adab and the people of Salam and not to stand with the Muslimun. We are in the way now. Now it is our duty to follow. It is our duty to learn Adab and to act with manners. When we do that, we are protecting the love between us and our Lord, us and our Rasul, us and our Shaykh more.
That time, inshallah, when we pass from this world, we will be able to present that treasure back to them. May we live according to the words of the great Vili Sultan Bahu, who said, a real ashik is one who accepts death at the hands of what he loves. He doesn't turn his face. He doesn't abandon love. Even if the price is to bear the slashes of swords, true ashk is the ashk of Hussein and Ali. They sacrifice their lives, but not their ashk. May Allah grant us manners. May Allah grant us to stay with those who will teach us good manners. May Allah grant us true love and may He grant us to protect that love. May we be with our Shaykh in this life and next. May our next life be with Allah's words. Salamun qawlam min Rabbi Rahim. Amin. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Al-Azim. Al-Azim. La ilaha illa wa nahayun qayyum wa antu al-Rahim. La ilaha illa Allah wa ta'ala sharika lah. Lahul mulk wa hamdu kum shan kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa ta'ala sharika lah. Lahul mulk wa hamdu kum shan kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa ta'ala sharika lah. Lahul mulk wa hamdu kum shan kadir. La ilaha illa anta subhanahu wa ta'ala sharika lah. La ilaha illa anta subhanahu wa ta'ala sharika lah. La ilaha illa anta subhanahu wa ta'ala sharika lah. Subhan kudusan rabbi lah rabbi lah. Subhan kudusan rabbi lah rabbi lah. Subhan kudusan rabbi lah rabbi lah. Inna dina anta Allah al-Islam. بمخلوقاتك صلاة مكررة أبدا عدد ما أحصى علمك وملء ما أحصى علمك وأضعاف ما أحصى علمك صلاة تزيد وتفوق وتفضل صلاة المصلين عليهم من الخلق أجمعين كفضلك على جميع خلقك